Hello everyone, I'm Max with a Spec Guide, and in this video I'm gonna show you how to start, drive, and charge the Kia Niro Electric. Now, right off the bat, I have to specify this video applies to the electric Kia Niro. This channel, if you're new to watching us, is really dedicated to electric vehicles. We give you guides, tutorials, and all kinds of things. So if you're looking for a guide on the plug-in hybrid or the hybrid version of this vehicle, I'm sorry, you'll have to look elsewhere. But if you have rented or someone's given you the keys of, you're borrowing a friend, or congrats, you're the new owner of the Kia Niro EV, this video is for you. I'm gonna show you all the basics of it, getting acquainted with it, whether this is your first time in an electric car or your first time in the Niro. I hope this video is gonna be super useful for you. So stay tuned and let's get into it. Right off the bat, let's get started with the key for the Kia Niro. So pretty basic fob unit here. You have some controls here for an advanced kind of a parking assist feature where it can move forward and back, but I don't want to demo that in this video. I just want to cover the basics, right? You can unlock and lock the car. Your buttons are on the side here. That's all fairly basic. You'll see the mirrors fold out when it's unlocked. And when you lock it, they're going to fold in. And of course, you'll get an audible chime. You can hold to open the lift gate. There's of course your panic button there. So if I open the lift gate, it's a power lift gate in this vehicle, just so you know. So it will open on its own. And if you're looking for where to charge this vehicle, we'll have a charging section of this video, but uh, the charger that comes with it, if you have one, is gonna be likely here in this underfloor area. If you need to plug into a wall outlet or something like that, then you've got that there. There's your normal trunk space. Make sure you close this with this and not with um, your hands because you wanna uh, you know, not abuse the motors there, which is the power lift gate. Now, let's say you wanna know how much battery is in the Nero. So we're gonna unlock it, of course. This vehicle does have also keyless proximity. So if my key's in my pocket, I can just put my hand here and unlock it. You'll see, of course, the mirrors fold out. And then I'm going to get inside and the vehicle is off. So we're gonna start it, foot on the brake, and I'm gonna press this power button here in the center console. When I do that, everything's gonna come to life. You'll get this notification in the uh, gauge cluster and you'll see right off the bat, it tells you estimated range remaining, but this is just a guess. I really don't like to go off this in electric cars because that's just a guess. Uh, and it depends vastly on your driving style. I like to look at the percentage of battery that's left. So on this main screen here, you'll see you've got an attractive kind of minimalist display. You can swipe over to the home screen and you've got a bunch of applications. I'm gonna go into EV and then in EV, you're gonna see I have 75% or whatever your percentage of battery is. And if you're going to a specific destination, you have one in the navigation, I'll show you how to use that later in this video, then that'll show you that as well with your estimated mileage and how long you have your next destination, your next charger, all these details are there. We'll get more into this in the charging section of this video, but that is how you tell how much battery is in it. So now that we're in the Nero though, how do you get comfy? Well, first things first, power driver's seat in this vehicle. So that's fairly standard. You just have your power seat controls. You have forward and back lumbar, tilt uh, and forward and back, and you can move the seat down and up. Um, you can scallop it to your preference. Uh, then the steering wheel is a manual adjustment. So you'll just use this lever and you can telescope it, move it up, down, and then lock it to your preference. Now, if I get in also, I'll show you that the mirrors in this vehicle are fairly standard. You've got left or right adjustment. You can see I'm adjusting left or right, which wherever I've selected, then just use the joystick or the uh, directional pad here to do that. Unlock and lock buttons. We've got all four power windows. By the way, if you wanna turn on the hazards, you've got a big prominent uh, button for that as well down there. So those are all the basic kind of controls right off the bat. We'll get more into the specific steering wheel layout, the controls for cruise control and uh, all that uh, later in this video. But other basic kind of start things to know, you've got shortcuts here. This is gonna be our gear selector. We'll get into that in the driving part of this video. Heated seats are gonna be here, um, shortcuts for those. And then in this trim, we also have the ventilated seats, which are very nice. Heated steering wheel there, an auto brake hold function, your electronic parking brake, which you'll uh, pull up to engage or push down to release um, with your foot on the brake, of course. Uh, and then you've got a shortcut for your parking cameras. If you want to use those, it'll bring those up on the screen. 
those also trigger when you go into reverse. You can toggle off or on the parking sensors, like if you're going through a car wash and you don't want them dinging, then quick shortcut to turn those off there. Super convenient. Then defrosters, you can turn those on here. They're always gonna be these illuminated buttons. You can turn off or on auto climate. You can turn on recirculation. And then we've got this part of the screen. It's a little unintuitive because this part is dynamic. Right now I'm in the navigation mode. So you can see I have shortcuts for my map, navigation, a favorite button that I can customize, um, you know, seeking your track, skipping back and forward. I can do all those things. I can also have radio shortcut, media, and then general settings. So that's all really useful. So this is kind of the default screen. Then you've got a volume adjustment for the passenger that you can use. That's volume. And then that's gonna, this is gonna be your radio kind of tuning knob. However, if I press this, all of a sudden these buttons become climate. And now this knob becomes driver side uh, climate. This is passenger side climate. So it basically switches context uh, just like that. Then we have fan controls driver only if we're you know you just want to focus on the driver keep the climate system efficient it's just you in the car uh, and then of course your uh, if you want to turn on the heater you sync climate between driver and passenger all these options are here it's a big thing here right we switch between our navigation and our climate context a little bit confusing that's really one of the uh, least intuitive things in my opinion about this car now if you want to charge your phones you've got shortcuts here so this one has a wireless charger all Kia Niro's have a USB-C and A port. Uh, important to know this, right, the newer USB standard, you can use to charge your phone, but if you're using Apple CarPlay, if you want to use data basically, right, or Android Auto, plug in your smartphone, get those functions on the screen, you have to use this rectangular USB-A port. That's a quirk right now of some Kia cars. I'm a fan on that. I wish they let you use either one, but only this USB-A port will do data. Uh, if you have a cigarette lighter adapter, you can, of course, use this 12-volt port as well to plug in more accessories or whatever you may want to. And then we've got manual climate adjustment vents, fairly basic, not like a Tesla Model Y or anything where we'd have to do all that on the touchscreen. Nope, it's just a normal standard adjustment there. So that's all pretty normal. We've got a normal glove box we can access, which is there. We've also got a center console space that I can show you. It's actually not that big, but it is there. Uh, because this vehicle shares a platform with hybrid and gas versions, you've got this drive shaft, so there's no additional storage in this space. Other controls to know for the driver, you can adjust the basically backlight of the screen here for the driver with this um, button here on the center console. There's a shortcut for opening the lift gate if you're in the driver's seat, you know, picking up kids and you want to open the trunk, of course you can do that. Traction control off, shortcut, and that is basically that. Then, by the way, if you need to open the hood, there's no front trunk storage in this vehicle, but for whatever reason, if you do need to open it, uh, put in the washer fluid or whatnot, you've got this hood release latch down here. Now, to the steering wheel. Let's get into the driving part of this video, and we'll begin here. Uh, we've got our instrument cluster, you can see, and our steering wheel. Steering wheel is fairly basic, but there are a few controls to know on it. I'll start with the basic stuff. Uh, windshield wipers, uh, we've got controls for the rear one we can toggle here. We've got controls for the front one. We can set between auto and different intervals, um, up and down. Very normal. If you need washer jets, you can pull this in. If you need jets on the back, you can pull it out. That's all fairly normal on that stock. Then we have this lighting stock. I like to leave it on automatic with automatic headlights, but if you need to turn the parking uh, lights on or lights on manually, you can do that. And then you can control manual high beams as well if you want there. You can flash people if you need to, or of course turn the lights off if you prefer. But like I said, I like to leave them automatic. They'll turn off when the car is off, just like any modern car. That works super well. Then on the steering wheel here, we have our uh, controls for cruise control on the left. We'll get into this briefly. And then on the right, we have media control. So there's volume control. If you need to turn the volume up or down, you can seek radio stations back and forward or customize this. You can um, change the mode you're in, so the device you're connected to. So you can go between like a Sirius XM on the radio or your Bluetooth phone or different things that are connected with this mode shortcut. This is the voice assistant in the car, or if you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it's your phone's voice assistant. This is call hang up button, pretty self-explanatory. And this button by default is a favorite button, but you can turn it into whatever you want. So you can see when I press it on the steering wheel, it brings up on the screen here settings for this button. So you could do whatever you want. You could have it be a shortcut to go to the EV screen I showed you. It shows your battery percentage and range and detail. You can have it show, uh, you could cancel a navigation route. You can do a bunch of things. Uh, basically these 
settings let you customize that button. Whatever you have as a preference, you can do that as a shortcut. That's nice. By the way, anytime you want to go home on this screen, you're going to press home here and we go back home. Um, and then I've shown you basic climate controls, but you can go into the climate menu on the screen uh, for a kind of also uh, software version of this with a touch screen if you prefer to adjust temperature and some settings that way. I'll go back here and show you. There's some other basic apps if you ever want to change settings. Uh, there's a setup app that basically guides you through uh, any other kinds of uh, device connections, screen layouts, things you may want to adjust about this car. That's all that. Map and navigation. Map is when you're kind of looking around exploring. You can pinch and zoom. You can pan and seek. Uh, and then if you want to find a specific place, there's a navigation menu. So we can input, uh, we have saved places we can have. There's Kia dealerships if you need to go somewhere for service. Point of interest categories, um, you know, coffee shops, restaurants, etc. cetera. Uh, or you can just search a destination either with your voice or type it in. Uh, like EV charging stations, let's say. It even has a shortcut for that there. Convenient. I'll show you how to do all that in the charging part of this video. But that is that. Now, more on the steering wheel here. We've also got paddle shifters and a drive mode button. So drive mode's really basic. I'll just start with that. When I press this in, it switches between sport, eco, and normal. These aren't that different. Really, all they do is just change the uh, accelerator sensitivity of this vehicle, how quick to get up and go it is. Um, adjust those as you like. I like to live in normal, but if you're trying to conserve, get the most range, you can be in eco or sport if you like a sensitive um, accelerator. Then you can hold it for snow mode. Uh, obviously, this will be useful in winter. This is a front wheel drive vehicle, but this will optimize the traction control nonetheless for driving in snow. So I'm going to turn snow mode off though by just holding that button um, or just toggling out of it. I'll press it, go back into normal. You can see the gauge cluster around shifts a little bit as well. Uh, then I have this page button on this side of the steering wheel. When I press this, I go between different views on the steering wheel. So I have the car info, and then I can go up and down on this using this control, up and down. So when I go up and down, what happens is I go between different uh, states of the screen. I can see my digital speedometer, and if I don't want to look at the gauge, I can see drive info, like my trip info, um, my kind of efficiency stats, all that. Then if I go press that mode button again, I go into uh, navigation. So if I have uh, directions in the car's infotainment, they'll show here. I could go up and down to direction prompts. I could go to info, which is just a tire pressure screen. Um, and then I can even go to a screen that shows me the driver assist functions. This ties into cruise control. So if you're using those features and highway driving assist, I'll show you that in this video. Um, this is where you control that. So I'm just one guy with a camera today. For safety, I'm not going to drive on the highway and film myself, but let me walk you through the basics of the cruise control system. Uh, the cruise control system, just so you know, as you use it, is initiated with this. You start and you stop it this way. There's also a resume and cancel button in on the switch. You adjust your speed up and down this way. And then, because it's adaptive cruise control in this vehicle, you can alter your following distance with this. That'll toggle between close and far following distances. You have a button here that you can actually enable or disable independent of cruise control. You can see the icon for it on the dash screen here. That's your steering assist. When that's on, when this icon's here, at certain speeds, this will actually follow the road for you. Uh, so this works in cruise control or outside of it. Helps you basically just auto steer. Still have your hands on the wheel. This is just like an assist function. I like it. Um, but if you don't like it, you can turn that off. It's completely independent from the cruise control functions, which are nice. Uh, highway driving assist on this vehicle also does automated lane changes. So when you are in adaptive cruise control and you use the turn signal, if it's clear, the car will make its own uh, basically lane changes when you indicate using the blinker. That's super nice. Of course, it uses the blind spot monitor and all that to make sure no one is in your way and you're not going to barrel into someone. So that's all that. Uh, basic steering wheel controls. How do we actually get this car into drive? Of course, we just put our foot on the brake and then there's the selector. So I can go between reverse, uh, neutral, or drive. You'll know which one you're in because you'll see an indicator light over it. I'm in reverse. The parking sensors are going off. I'm in neutral. I can go into drive and drive, and then if I ever want to go back into park, uh, when I'm done driving, I just press P for park. Uh, and then in this vehicle, unlike a Tesla um, or some other electric cars, you do have to stop it when you get out. So if we were to get out, I'd have to press the stop button again, engine shut off. 
I find it's less intuitive in electric cars because you don't have the engine noise. So just make sure you do press this before you get out. Otherwise the car will chime at you and it'll stay on when you leave. So make sure you turn that off. Of course, when you lock it, if you leave, it'll turn off anyways, but I find myself sometimes forgetting. So I like to remind you of that. But if I go into drive, basics of driving this car, it's really normal. I'm just gonna drive around this parking lot briefly and it's super basic. I mean, it's just like any other car. It's fairly intuitive. It'll creep forward. And then of course you have your accelerator and brake. But if you want to use what some electric vehicle drivers call one pedal mode, you can use these paddle shifters on the left and the right of the steering wheel to basically adjust your uh, sensitivity to how the car does what's called regenerative braking. So if I go um, to this, uh, upshift, it looks like an upshift basically, it has a plus icon, I have more kind of creep forward, there's less of that regenerative braking, it only will slow the car down when I use the brake pedal as you would normally expect. It blends in using the motors to charge the car's battery by um, reversing their current, that's what regenerative braking is, and you'll see that function when I press the brakes, it goes into this charge mode, if I use the accelerator it goes into power. I'm in a parking lot, so this needle isn't going to move too much, but as you're on the highway, you're slowing down, it should go into charging. As you accelerate, it goes into power. However, if I want that to be more aggressive and I want it to all like do that on its own, when I lift off the accelerator, like if you've driven a Tesla, they call this one pedal driving, I'm going to press this minus button, this minus paddle shifter, and I'm going to press that. It increases the sensitivity of it. There's three levels, and if I switch it to the uh, largest mode, assuming the conditions are met, Sometimes they're not, like if you're under braking. But if I, uh, <laughs> if I am driving and it does let me shift into the most aggressive regenerative braking mode, that's called the eye pedal. It's not letting me shift into the eye pedal now, but I'll try to include a picture as I drive. I don't want to film while I'm driving on the road here as one person without my GoPro on me today. So apologies for that. But basically, you'll see a green eye pedal illumination. I'll flash a picture of what that looks like on screen for your demonstration. When you press this button, right, this minus button to the max, that means you're in one pedal driving effectively. You lift off the accelerator, the car will slow to a stop and then stay held until you lift until you use the accelerator again. Essentially, you don't have to touch the brake pedal in most driving. Of course, it's still there if you need it, but this is a nice kind of aid for traffic. It's a nice feature of electric vehicles. And of course, you're always charging your battery when you're going into this charge zone, slowing down. So that's cool. It combines, right, the regular friction brakes with, uh, the regenerative function of the motors braking for you. That's really cool. Uh, then you've got an efficiency graph here, by the way, in the instrument cluster. So if you're a nerd like me, you can see how efficient your driving is, how many miles you're getting out of every kilowatt hour. That's a fun little nerdy display. That's essentially driving the Kia Nero EV with all the basic functions, right? Cruise control here, our paddles for adjusting the sensitivity of that slowing regen function. That's all driving, but let's say it's time to charge the Kia Nero. Once you're in park, you'll be able to type in stuff into the navigation menu. And I showed you how to get into navigation, right? It's just here. So you can either navigate with your phone in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or use navigation. Um, and you can search for our destination. So if we want to find an EV charging station, uh, we can see what's nearby. So we've got AC charging and DC. For context here, AC is slower charging typically. It's what you're going to find some dealerships, malls, um, movie theaters, hotels uh, have AC charging. This is the kind of charging you could also have in your home garage. It's slower. It takes several hours usually. Then you've got DC fast charging. If you're road tripping, even though this car isn't the best electric car to road trip, but if you are, if you want the fastest possible charge, you'll want to go to a DC station. So we have an EVgo DC station here. So I um, want to head to that. So I'm just going to select that in the navigation. We'll set it as our destination and the car is going to guide us there. So let's go to that station. I'm going to show you how to actually plug in and charge this car. Uh, and then of course unplug it. Okay, when you've shown on to a charger, whether it be a slow charger or a fast charger, make sure you pull in the vehicle if possible because these cables at times can be short and you wanna make sure you park pulling in because on this car, to charge it, it's the, the front. 
doesn't have a fuel door in the back or a charge port in the back like other electric cars. It has it on the front center here. I press in on this and it um, opens and then you've got flaps. So if you're just charging at home using AC charging, you'll just need to open this one uh, to plug in um, the socket there. But if you're using full DC fast charging, we're using what's called a CCS port. So you need that full boy right there. Uh, and that plastic is fairly cheap. So it looks like I just tore it off. Oops. Uh, anyhow, once it's open, you're going to take the cable from the station, activate the station as you might. Every station is different. We have videos on the channel showing you how to activate an EVGO, Electrify America, and ChargePoint. Um, so you just plug in for most stations. They like you to plug in first, and then you activate on the charger, however you might want to. You're going to click the cable into, into place. So I'm going to plug it in, click it. You'll wait for it to lock from the station. You'll hear basically a clicking noise somewhere in that chain. And then I'm going to get this charger going. So let's get it charging and I'll show you what that looks like on the vehicle screen. All right, I've plugged in. The charging has started. They've activated my charger and the vehicle is going to give you the state of its battery charge, how long it thinks it has to charge to get to 100% or whatever your charge limit may be, and the current charge rate it's taking in, in kilowatts. By the way, if you want to change your charge limit, uh, the vehicle has to be on, so I can just turn the power button with my foot off the brake to go into accessory mode. And then I'm going to show you charging settings because this is important. So you're going to want to go into setup here, and then you're going to want to go into vehicle. I might have to turn the vehicle on actually, but I'm going to turn it on while it's charging. I'm going to go into the EV menu I showed you earlier. It shows you your battery percentage and uh, you can see a few settings here. So I'm going to click this settings cog here to set the max charge rate. So what I like to do is if I'm charging at home or an AC charger, 100% uh, is fine. Um, but for daily use every day, if it is your home charger, you're charging every night, they recommend for battery health to set that to 80% generally. That's what we find is best. Same for DC charging. If you need to, to use all the range of this car to make it to your next destination, you know yours, <laughs> you know whatever you need best. But just as a precaution for battery health, I like to set my charge limits to 80% for both DC and AC on an everyday basis. I change it to 100% if I need to, to get uh, the farthest distance if I need to use the entire range. But generally I find 80% as a good charge limit. Um, so I like to leave things there. You can control um, charging current if you need to reduce it. There's a battery conditioning mode I recommend leaving on in the winter months because when it's cold and you navigate in the vehicle's menu like I showed you to a charger, it's going to precondition the battery, warm it up so you can get a good, um, you can get a good uh, charge basically, good charging speed, the battery's not too cold. If you're curious about all these, we have videos on this channel about why we set a charge limit, but that's just my spiel on that. That's basics of charging it. Let's say we're done charging though. Um, by the way, I should mention with electric cars, you can lock them and walk away while they're charging, do whatever you want. But let's say you come back to the vehicle, you're done, um, done charging. First, make sure the vehicle's off. I forget to turn it off. Whoopsie on my part there. You're gonna end your charge session before you unplug on your charger. So do that however you want to. Um, so you can see on this EVGO unit, I can have a stop session button on the touchscreen. Charging is complete, good. I'm gonna hear a clicking sound from this connector here. Uh, we can see our battery is basically you know, right three thirds full or close to 100%. That's a nice little indicator there to show you when you're charging, but it's off, means we're not charging. I can press the button in on this handle, remove it, return it to the stall. Make sure you close everything when you're done. Get that nice and tidy, and we're ready to leave the charger and go on to whatever else we have to do. All right, that's how to start drive and charge the Kia Niro EV, one of my favorite affordable EVs in the market. If you're an owner and you know something I missed, please share that in the comments. If you have any questions that we can answer, please leave those in the comments that we haven't covered. Uh, and other videos you want to see, other vehicles you want us to do start drive and charge guides on, let us know as well. We have an email, guide at specstudios.com also in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Check out our other videos on this channel for more help with electric cars. Uh, and I've been Max with that is Spec Guide. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.